Charles Focar, January 15, 2020. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. And thank you for sharing and subscribing. I appreciate all those. They all add up. I want to give a special. Oh, before I forget, happy James Earl Ray Day. Isn't it great to be alive? All you people who work for the government today, you get the day off for James Earl Ray Day. Uh, absolutely wonderful that our government would would actually uh, honor a man such as James Earl Ray. I it just, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> what else can I say? You get a day off with pay at the taxpayer's expense for uh, individuals that actually did a lot for our our country I want to thank uh, my buddy that came through this weekend Friday and Saturday he drove uh, in two days Wednesday Thursday Friday from Ohio and he brought me a gift and it's a pretty excellent gift uh, Intromax uh, got 71 organically bound trace minerals macro minerals herbs antioxidants fruit sprouts essential fatty acids etc 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 i'm gonna start taking this here i'm gonna get i got oh i didn't tell you i got a I, after i got my coffee grinder for two bucks and actually it wasn't two bucks i had two bucks in my hands at the local thrift shop down here and it was uh, the couple of days before Chris Xmas, and uh, I had two bucks in my hand, and, and this thing was two bucks, and uh, she took a dollar from me and said, Merry Christmas. So I got a Christmas gift from the local uh, thrift shop, the, the grinder. And I got to thinking later, I said, man, you know what? I wish I had my juicer. I have an awesome juicer up in Montana, and I just don't have a lot of room here, so I didn't bring it, and I regretted that. And I'm going to be doing a bunch of Illuminati hand signals here, so you look for them, buddy. You, uh, you trolls. You know, the Illuminati takes good care of me. They set me up in a 40-year-old mini Winnie Winnebago that I've had to work on for the last six months. But hey, they took they took good care of their own. And I'm your your insight is just amazing that you spotted that. So I was thinking, man, I wish I had my, I uh, wish I had uh, my blender. So guess what? You know, you know what's coming here. I went down to the local thrift, uh, thrift shop again, walked around in the kitchen area, and guess what I found? Hang on, I'm going to show you. And you're not going to believe this. I could not believe what I saw. And I saw this juicer on the counter there. And guess what? It's exactly the same model that I have. In fact, it's a little newer. Same model, but newer. And same color. Same color. Maybe they only make them in one color. And guess what? It's brand new. Never been used. And I put the plastic in there, so when you do the, the, the pulp, it, it goes in the plastic bag. And uh, the price tag, you can't see it there, but it's five bucks. Five bucks, folks. Five bucks. Awesome. I'm sorry, man. I almost forgot. Uh, I also got support from uh, JC. Uh, the other day, I haven't been able to get down to the library. They're closed. You know, James Earl Ray Day, they're closed. Yesterday, they're closed. Sunday, haven't had a chance. I had, I had my buddy here over the weekend. Haven't had a chance to get down there and send you an email to thank you. But JC... Uh, thank you very much. There's one person that didn't get offended at the my uh, my video on the two mites, and we'll get to that here in a few moments. So let's take care of some old business before we get on to the new business. And I want to talk about Ken Follett. I tell you, I've been reading these books here, and uh, I read the first book through. Got through it okay. I know he's a propagandist, just like Tom Clancy. But I read something here not too long ago, and it refreshed my memory. I remember that uh, um, Adolf Hitler and the National Socialist in July 1940 
they've made up some uh, leaflets and they uh, dropped them over the Brits in July of 1940 telling them that they didn't want a war offering peace terms even though Germany was winning at the time they said let's just stop this here it's ridiculous the Americans I don't know July they haven't been in the war yet Pearl Harbor hadn't happened the false flag of Pearl Harbor hadn't taken place yet so the United States was not in the war the Brits were getting their butts kicked the German uh, machine and it's a, you know we don't need to go into all that but the point is that uh, uh, Adolf Hitler did not want to have a war with his brothers he considered the Brits his brothers and it's been said that the Brits are Germans who took a boat ride and the Germans are Brits who stayed home. They're probably and most likely both the Brits and the Germans from the tribe of Judah. Now, if you know Israelite history, and I try to bring that up on this channel as much as possible, and you'll get that on very few other channels. I'm not saying I'm the only one, but uh, we do bring that up here. And a lot of you... Zionist Christians you can't handle that and that's not what John Hagee's teaching you or Pat Robertson or uh, Jimmy Baker and we're gonna get to Jimmy Baker here before the end of the video and or MacArthur John MacArthur you know he's the he's the uh, the Christian teacher for the upper upper class right and I used to listen to him so I can speak from experience okay so anyway back to Ken Follett I'm reading through this I only got that far, and I'm getting bogged down, and I'm getting to where I can't read anymore because it's a bunch of male cow dung, all right? So I skip ahead. They got the chapters set up by the year. This one is July 1940. Can you see that? You know, this is actually 1940, number one, and there's number two. So I read through the whole part skim through it looking for the, the fact or um, to answer the question if uh, Ken Foley brought up the fact that Adolf Hitler threw those leaflets out of the plains over Britain to tell the British people see he knows he can't go through the channels because they're going to reject it so he went right to the people he used, if you will, he used social media. And he went right to the people, and it couldn't be censored. And boy, would I like to get my hands on one of those uh, pamphlets, eh? I think, th I think there's uh, c copies of them online. Look at uh, Tomato Bubble, Mike. Can't remember the last name. But anyway, it's on his channel, and it's on his uh, article there. You can read it for yourself. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think I found uh, the fact that this is uh, uh, historical fiction, right? So you think maybe the fact that Adolf Hitler sent those leaflets over British were in the book by Ken Follett? What do you think? I wanted to uh, mention the fact when I was in Qatar, when I went to Qatar to work, I worked for the Qatar Petroleum Company. They did a lot of health tests. I had to take a blood test. I had to take a test to determine whether I had TB. We went to the, some building somewhere, health official building in Qatar. This is a little thumb sized country, non-white. 150 Qataris lived there. They had a bunch of Pakistanis coming in to build their new high towers there, big real estate boom in the Middle East there well, when I was there. And uh, even though we're all equal, even though the white guys and the Pakistanis are all equal, uh, they took us uh, white English teachers all the way to the front of the line. There must have been 200 Pakistanis there all in line with their shirts off. And we got all the way up to the front to the machine, and the doctor there let us go in front. We got to cut in front of all the Pakistanis. I couldn't believe it, man. Talk about white supremacy. So here's the Arabs saying, you know what? You white guys 
you Europeans and Americans, you don't have to stand in line with all the Pakistanis. You could go right to the front of the line. We went right to the front of the line. They took the x-ray, make sure we didn't have TB. Now, I wonder if they're doing that here when they're letting in all these mestizos and Somalians and uh, all these uh, other th third worlders from these shithole countries. I wonder if they're doing that, but they sure did it to us in, in the little old Qatari. Yeah, I forgot this. I was going to mention this uh, at the beginning there for James Earl Ray. They don't forget they're going to take uh, Andrew Jackson, who was a real war hero, a white guy, alpha male. This guy here was uh, a real jerk, wasn't he? He went down to New Orleans to fight the Brits, and he actually was a, a war hero. And one, he kept the Brits from taking over the entire Louisiana Purchase. So we can't have that. So they're going to, the, the uh, Esau Edomites are going to take uh, Andrew Jackson. He fought the bank. He fought the bank. Uh, hold on a second. I got something I want to show you. Now, I only brought one book with me about, from, uh, or about Andrew Jackson and uh, Andrew Jackson in the bank war. And you won't find the quote that he, that is attributed to Andy, Andrew Jackson about, I'm going to fight the vipers. You're a den of vipers. It's not in here. Not in the index. But uh, I got a speck here on the screen, right on my eye. So uh, they're going to take, and guess who they're going to put on there? They're going to put on a, a negress that I don't even know her name, and I don't want her to know her name. And this is one of the most used bills in the United States because it's in all the ATM machines, folks. I think we should start planning on going into the bank when we go to the atm machine and going into the bank and say you know what i want to trade these uh um twenty dollar bills in with the negress on them for uh a different bill uh, give me some tens we got hamilton there he's no better he was a agent of the rothschilds so man uh, you know what this is so exciting to live in this country now they're finally getting everything squared away you know they're getting rid of the white caucasian race they're bringing in all the third world um, um, creators of shithole countries. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be really interesting to live here. I mean, isn't it exciting to be alive, folks? The Esau Edomites are doing all the right things. Don't you agree? And while I was in my uh, bookcase there, I, I, I remember uh, I, I saw this book, What Shat Is That? Or What Shat That? And uh, I haven't forgot about it. I just got so many. There's so much to talk about. What do you, you know, you got to pick and choose here. And uh, shat is not real high on the list. But then again, you know, what a shithole. So maybe I should get to it right away, huh? What do you think? <laughs> now, this is kind of a, a segue. This is going to segue into the, the last topic I want to talk about. My buddy Ryan had these made up and they're belt buckles made out of pewter very good quality they bent they they mold to your uh your waistline and uh, 9 11 ephesians 5 11 on there right on the front if you can see that i'm going to read ephesians i'm going to read ephesians to you chapter 5 verse 11 here we go ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them so this is like a walking statement on 9 11 using the scripture reprove the unfruitful works of darkness so uh, my buddy ryan uh, provided them to me to offer him to you he doesn't have a channel i happen to have a channel so they're $39.95. They're $39.95 if you want it. They come in a little box like this. You can have them engraved on the back. Give it as a gift, whatever you would like to do. And, I, and they're shipped free shipping. If you're interested, let me know. Now I want to talk about my last video, Two Mites, uh, Talents, and I think the Tug of War. Now I knew when I when I did that video that I was going to get some people's panties in a twist. Okay? I knew that. But you know what? You know what I like about my situation here? I am not dependent 
on any single individual or any group of individuals for my support. I have reduced my expenses down to the absolute bare minimum. Alrighty. So I, I'm going to say it again. I don't need your money. I don't need your money. Okay. I got it covered folks. And, and my money is coming back to me. The money that I put in the government forced me to give it to them. And I was self-employed most of my life so almost all the money the government has in their greedy little hands and they're giving back to me a little bit every month hoping i'm going to die off they're spraying up here the gmo foods the fluoride in the water uh, the vaccines uh, all that stuff they're hoping we get sick so they can keep our money and they can give it to the uh, third worlders coming in, the Pakistanis and the Indians who can uh, use it to buy motels up all across this country, folks. And then they got a place to live and they got income and you and I are looking for a job. But that's, you know, that's a minor thing. Let's not worry about that. Let's just get stick with this. So all the money that I'm getting from the government, they call it a benefit. It's not a benefit. It's my money. And I wish they would give it to me. I'm going to do some Illuminati hand signals here for you, okay? Okay, okay, okay. So my money coming back to me a month at a time. And when I put it in, I could buy a gallon of gas for a buck or less. And now a gallon of gas is three bucks. And it takes a gallon, of ga a gallon and a half of gas to run the portable generator all day. So you, see, you know what I'm saying, folks? They rip us off at every chance they get. But guess what? They didn't win. I've reduced my expenses down to a minimum. Now, what I, the point I was trying to make in that other video is that there's a day coming, a reckoning coming, when uh, you, who've been given 10 talents, 5 talents, or 1 talent, uh, the Lord's going to say, what did you do with the talents I gave you? And the talents may be ability. The talents may be a skill. The talents may be money. You have, a, you have an ability to make money, and you, can, and you can invest that money. You can provide that money in the kingdom of God. And it may be you can give your money to um, um, Jimmy Baker. We're going to get that out in a minute. You can give your money to John Hagee. And that way he can he can uh, send the money to Israel and the Jewish people. And uh, you can give it to Pat Robinson. You can give it to the 700 Club. There's there's all kinds of places out there. You, Kenneth Copeland, you can give your money into a myriad of places, and I'm sure they're going to put it to good use. <laughs> Let's not forget this guy, man. This guy set up, especially for you people he, that are paying taxes. He set up a 501c3 tax-free charitable foundation just for you. Let's go. Uh, let me remind you who he is, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. If Charles Folkart starts, starts talking about scriptural principles about the handling of money, you get your panties in a twist and you're just uh, upset as all hell. And let me give you an example here. Not all of you, not all of you, some of you, some of you get it. And, uh, and, uh, and may the Lord reward you for the fact that you get it. But I want to show you this quote here. By Barry White. He says, and I don't know which Barry White it is. There's two Barry Whites on my channel. There's another Illuminati hand sign. Okay. Jeez, you're starting to sound like Jim and Tammy Baker. Funny, my Bible says, quote, you received free, freely shall you give. So let's go take a look at that passage in the in my Bible in context, shall we? It's in Matthew 
chapter 10, verse 5, we'll start there. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the nations. That should be nations. Gentiles shouldn't be in there. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but rather, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house, the offspring of Jacob Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is the verse Barry White quotes, chapter 10 of Matthew, verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Now he stops right there. He's a flat stone uh, teacher or flat stone uh, Christian. But let's let's continue on, shall we? Now, verse 9. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire in it who is worthy, and abide there till ye go thence. And when ye come into a house, salute it, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your repurse, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet, or shake off the dust of your feet. For I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Let's go back up here to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 10 shall we and let's have a closer look at that let's go a little deeper as they say let's dig down compare this word meat is actually nourishment uh, by implication rations your w wages it's translated food and meat and the workman is worthy right here worthy uh, deserving or suitable etc et and he does uh, the Lord says don't take two coats don't take extra shoes for the worth the workman is worthy of his food or his rations and back here when you come into a house saluted verse 12 and if the house be worthy let your peace come upon it but if it be not worthy, let your repeat your peace return unto you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet, or shake off the dust of your feet. You know, life is entertaining, isn't it? I want to thank Barry White there for entertaining me. Uh, he is comparing me to... Uh, Jim and Tammy Baker, but I, I thought he got married again, and uh, but you know, that's a minor. I, I get the point here. Let's go have a look at uh, my house, uh, shall we? Okay, now let's go have a look at uh, Jimmy Baker's uh, house, uh, shall we? And I tell you, life is entertaining. I want to thank you, Barry, for your entertainment. Uh, you're you're a real kick, okay? And then you know we could go. Uh, we could mention the fact that uh, I'm gonna do some more of them uh, Illuminati hand signals here for you trolls. Um, we could mention the fact that bakers are on Talmud vision, and that should tell you something right there. And uh, what am I? I'm on a little YouTube channel which could get banned any time now but hey Barry uh, anyway and all all the others like Barry Barry White I, I want to thank you for your support of this channel <laughs>
Anyway, uh, I, I do want to thank you, uh, all of those uh, of you who support this channel for sharing and for subscribing and for liking and all that stuff, man. It's it's uh, it's um, I don't know. I kind of see us as a team and I want I just really want to thank you. And it's uh, nice to talk to Joe the other day on the phone and and uh, and uh, and the others. It was a special thanks to my buddy Ryan, man. You know, Ryan, you're more of a pastor than most of these guys that call themselves pastors. You know, some of these pastors you never hear from them. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Let's call it quits there, shall we? And may the grace of God, our Father Yahweh, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, here's the Illuminati signs again, may his grace be upon us all. And they were non Jews, by the way, and the Jews are not Judah. For some of you uh, Zionists, you're Christ Judeo Christians, which is an oxymoron. Um, may His grace be upon us all. For as you can see, <laughs> we most certainly need it. See ya.